with our worship online this morning. I just am so glad that you're here today. God is glad that you're here today, and we just want to worship his name this morning. So whether you're at home or in the parking lot or at Walmart, wherever it is that you are this morning, we ask that you stand up and let's worship his name this morning. And there is power in that name, that name of Jesus. Generations online and in the sanctuary. I am going to be reading from Psalms 92. Out of the Passions Translation. A poetic praise song for the day of worship. It's so enjoyable to come before you with uncontainable praises spilling from our hearts. How we love to sing our praises over and over to the matchless God, high and exalted over all. At each and every sunrise, we will be thanking you for your kindness and your love. As the sun sets and all through the night, we will keep proclaiming, you are so faithful. Melodies of praise will fill the air as every musical instrument joined with every heart overflows with worship. 
Verse 4, no wonder I'm so glad. I can't keep it in. Lord, I'm shouting with glee over all you have done, for all you have done for me. What a mighty miracle and your power at work, just to name a few. Depths of purpose and layers of meaning saturate everything you do. Such amazing mysteries found within every miracle that nearly everyone seems to miss. Those with no discernment can never really discover the deep and glorious secrets hidden in your ways. It's true, the wicked flourish, but only for a moment, foolishly forgetting their destiny with death. And they will all one day be destroyed forevermore. But you, O Lord, are exalted forever in the highest place of endless glory. While all your opponents, the workers of wickedness, will all perish forever separated from you. Your anointing has made me strong and mighty. You have empowered my life for triumph by pouring fresh oil over me. You've said that those lying in wait to pounce on me would be defeated. And now it's happened right in front of my eyes. And I've heard their cries of surrender. Yes, look how you've made all your lovers to flourish like palm trees. Each one growing in victory, standing with strength. You've transplanted them into your heavenly courtyard where they are thriving before you. For in your presence, they will still overflow and be anointed. Even in their old age, they will stay fresh, bearing luscious fruit and abiding faithfully. Listen to them with pleasure. They still proclaim, you're so good. You're my beautiful strength. You never made a mistake with me. The word of God spoken into our hearts bring redemption and bring change, brings renewal, brings a confidence that we are in the right place doing the right things. And so we want to continue to be a group of people who consistently, constantly are reading God's word, not just reading but also hearing and putting into practice what the Word of God is asking us to do. So I just want to encourage you today, as you hear God's Word, say, Lord, today is the day that you are seeing, speaking situations into my life that's going to liberate me and make me whole. Yes. And so I'm going to pray for that, that that would happen today in your situation. Father, we stand before you and we declare that you are the great I am. You are the Lord God Almighty. Lord, in you is power. And so, Father, we just ask for everyone who has a need today, everyone who, as they stand before you, Lord, you are already speaking to them. We just want to give you praise because without you, we can do nothing. But, Lord, with you, we can do all things. And we thank you today for the privilege of knowing you and serving you. And, Lord, we surrender to you every aspect of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. You know, we all belong to the family of God. And we all belong here this morning, whether you're with us or online. I see hope. Coming on the horizon, there's no need for hiding, cause I belong. Here I am, in the presence of the great I am, near to your heart, oh God, I have found my joy, I've searched so long. In darkness I walked so far, 
fighting, but I'm holding on when your love draws near. Oh, hallelujah, I belong in your presence, St. Fancy I see hope coming on the horizon. There's no need for hiding. Your love prevails, Christ my peace within, I will trust in you, in your presence, Lord, joys will overflow, you are God and friend, I am whole again, hallelujah, I belong here, in your presence. a clap offering this morning wherever you are. He is so worthy of our praise. Lord, we belong in your presence. Father, you made us to be in your presence. Oh, I can't wait for that day when I get to see you face to face, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, you have made a way for us. I worship you. I worship. 
worship you. You are here healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Oh, you are here, Lord. You are here turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here ending every heart. I worship you. I worship you.
Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior. you have sent your son to to be that savior lord that one that provides us that that entry into eternity with you father god lord we thank you for your holy spirit which you you've left here with us lord on this earth so that we can feel you so that we can see you 
so that we can be changed by you, Father God. So this morning, Lord, we give you this time of, uh, of musical worship, Lord. We ask you to bless the rest of this morning as we continue on praising you and worshiping you through your word, Father God. Thank you again for loving us so much. And it's in your name that we pray. And everybody said, amen. Hello and welcome to Generations Church Virtual Sermon. My name is Lisa Jones and I am the Children's Director here at Generations. And I just want to take a moment to remind everybody that we are still selling these little gems or Stater's cards. The Stater's cards come in amounts of $10, $25, $50, and $250. And 6% of every card you buy goes back to our children's ministry from Stater's itself. So if you need to buy groceries, and who doesn't because we can't go anywhere right now, please consider buying one of our cards and also supporting our ministry. To order a card, you simply go to info at generationschurchsb.com and our lovely friend will meet up with you to get a card to you. Welcome to my virtual classroom where I am attempting to do virtual Sunday school. And um, I just know that a lot of you are dealing with all the virtual learning, distance learning, whatever you want to call it. Please don't call it homeschooling though, because it is not homeschooling. Um, this is something unlike anything we've ever seen before. And I know it's stressful and you guys are probably pulling your hair out, but we just want to acknowledge you and um, encourage you during this time because you guys are doing a great job, even if you think you're not. And uh, to celebrate that, we want to play a short little video that uh, just kind of embraces the whole feeling of everything you're going through right now. And I encourage you to have your kids watch it with you because they need to see it more than you do. Don't make me count to one, two, three. Yeah, it's the parent rap, y'all. We may spend most of our time chasing toddlers down, but we still know how to rock the hizzle. I don't even know what you just said. We used to be cool, back in the day, back on the block, watching PG-13 movies, staying up way out the dock. Then we had a couple shorties, and now we're really flossy, cause now we be rolling with our own little posse in the minivan, or in our little wagon. Let me throw it to moms, cause the little one is sagging. I used to bling it up, I used to dress real shoe, now I accessorize the food that's already been chewed, and that's all right. Make this diaper bag look good when I'm walking through the mall trying to wrangle my groove. My PB and J's will set your world on fire. I could make you mac and cheese blindfolded on a wire. I'm wiping the doo doo, kissing the boo boo's, got them eyes in the back of my head. I see all doo doo, using your full name so you know I ain't playing. And that's why all my kiddos, they keep saying, Mom, Mom, she's the bomb. Rocking all night till the break of dawn. Cooking in peace so I'll grow up strong. Got my second seat. In those brows if we get out of hand when it comes to candy land i'm a stone cold player helping out with the homework i'm an algebra slayer wrestle cars in the place without spilling my mug if i tuck you in at night you'll be as snug as a bug then i'm off in the morning to make that cheese you may not know this yet but it doesn't grow on trees now mama take it please what uh take it i'm dropping time like a hot potty training on my tops washing all the pants and pots Tying little shoes and knots Giving knowledge to your brain Like if your friends jump off a train You don't have to do the same Not get your toys out of the rain I'm cleaning every spill Cutting coupons like a pill If you need parental skill Now you know we are for real You don't think our rhymes are ill, boy Then you're grounded for a mill Mom, mom, she's legit Making us chill when we pitch a fit Telling us to share and never to hit If you can't say something nice Put a sock in it He's the guy, never gets tired of playing I spy The constant barrage of 
keeps asking why, and he always pretends he needs another tie. You know money doesn't grow on trees. Why buy the cow if the milk is free? This won't hurt you as much as it hurts me. If you want dessert, eat another veggie. Close that door, you weren't born in a stable. Sit up straight and kiss your aunt Mabel. Close your mouth when you chew. Get your elbows off the table. Mom and dad of the year, check it. That's the label. It's a parent rap, y'all. And it's a parent. We're great parents. Mom and daddy in the house. Mom and daddy own the house. Mom and daddy need to clean the house. Keep your hands to yourself, boy. Don't make me stop this beat. I'll do it. I'll pull this beat right over. still so inclined and uh, tied to those paper checks though you can also mail them to the church still um, and you can also go on there and see past services um, and old sermons that we have gone through in case you want to go back and study up on any of those uh, and with that I'll have it passed back to you dad hey thanks Noah Hey, uh, did you know that we go through 180 billion aluminum cans every year? That's like 6,700 cans every second. It's just crazy, those numbers. Anyhow, the Helping Hands Ministry wants to remind you to bring your uh, bottles and cans here to the church. Uh, they take those in for the recycling, and that helps support those that are in need, uh, especially during the holiday season as we build up our Christmas and Thanksgiving baskets and Easter baskets. Hey, they want to thank you for all the support you've done throughout the years. I know they brought in a couple hundred dollars the last time they went. They go about every month. So continue to bring those, drop them off at the church, and the Helping Hands ministry uh, really, really appreciates it. So thank you all for continuing to support that ministry. And now for our missions update. Bruce wants to remind all of us that God has in numerous times the Generations Church done exceedingly and above abundantly all like our miracle on Palm Avenue. He also want to remind us or let us know that we've received $11,013 in mission support contributions. And we want to thank all of you for God's provisions. We're making great progress to enable our missionaries to share the gospel in 46 countries. Our mission goals for 2020 is $15,000, though I think we're gonna exceed that this year. Um, uh, and and uh, maybe get to a $20,000 mark. So we want to continue to ask you to support and pray for our missions around the world. And let's all just pray that we meet and exceed the goal of $15,000 and reach that $20,000 mark. And hey, that screen behind me is from our global Open Bible uh, Global Missions website. You can check that out. There's many opportunities there. You can look at some of the missionaries and some of the partners that support missions. And we thank you all for continuing to support missions and uh, reaching and exceeding our goal. Thank you so much for that. Hey, our Bible studies are active on Zoom these days. Our men's are meeting on Monday at 6 p.m. Our renew scheduled uh, is scheduled for Tuesday nights, but we're on a hiatus till September. Impact is meeting on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. In God's Word is meeting Fridays at 7 p.m. And if you'd like to join one of our G groups, just email us at generations at info at generations church sb.com. And hey, if you'd like to start a small group or uh, participate in one, you can also email Keith at generations church sb.com. And I've always said that small groups are the way to go. They are the way to the heart of the church. So join a small group today. And uh, we hope to see you at one soon. And lastly, if you know anyone who needs prayer or help during these challenging times, you can email us at prayer at generationschurchsb.com. Or for other assistance, you can email us at get help at generationschurchsb.com. You can also email our pastors. You can keep up, uh, updated on Facebook or you can sign up for our newsletter on our website just by creating a membership account. You know, you can also follow us on all the other media outlets like YouTube, where you can subscribe to our page and Twitter and Instagram, and uh, you can catch up on our daily videos and all our inspirational posts from our pastors and leaders. I think that's all of the announcements for today. So it's time for 
for the man of the hour, the man with the plan, the man with the message. Here is Jim Hall going to talk to you more about uh, the promises of God. So, hey, Jim, take it away, sir. Well, good morning. Good to see you. Good to have you here. Good to hear your voices as you sing to the Lord and rejoice in him and all that he is doing and all that he has done to transform your life. Every one of us have been touched by the grace of God, the goodness of God, the power of God. And so we're going to continue that, continue to open our hearts to the Lord and and let him change us ever increasingly more. We've been in a series that we've called God's uh, Great and Precious Promises. And we're in part three today, and our message is, is, is entitled, The Devil's Days Are Numbered. The Devil's Days Are Numbered. In fact, we have a promise from uh, the Holy Spirit of God uh, about that. So let me share this with you. God's promise out of Romans 16 verse 20, the God who brings peace will soon defeat Satan and give you power over him. It's an interesting debate that people have. Is there such a thing as a devil or no? And so we're going to spend some time today looking at some scriptures and we're going to talk about what the implication of those are to our lives and how we can apply the scripture to, to our lives and, and walk in freedom and not in bondage to uh, demonic forces. And uh, let, let me ask you this question. Have you ever been invited to an event at someone's house, a friend's house that turned into something more than just barbecue in the, your neighbor's uh, fence. Uh, <laughs> for many of us, the friend who invited us to the barbecue really had ulterior motives. He wanted or she wanted to introduce us to Amway. <laughs> How many say so you've heard of Amway? You know, they, they've, they've gone undercover now. They, they, they have about three or four different names, but they don't call themselves Amway anymore. And, and, uh, but, but a lot of times when that happened, I know that a lot of people were offended by it and wanted nothing to do with it. On the other hand, there were many people who, who jumped in and, and uh, they, they, they made a lot of money. I've talked to a couple of friends who uh, did that some years ago and they were doing very, very, very well. And, and of course, the, the uh, founder uh, of Amway is a guy, last name is DeMoss, uh, and, and they became just incredibly wealthy. I don't know how you could describe it, just incredibly wealthy. And, uh, but the other side of it is they're very generous with their wealth and, and, and do a lot of great things uh, with it and, and for it. In a similar setting, have you ever been in a setting where you get confronted on the question, is there such a thing as a devil. And I, that's what I said a minute ago that I, I want us to spend time on, on today. See, as human beings, to, to the question, is there such a thing as a devil? As human beings, could it be that we made a mistake? Could, could it be that we have made a false assumption? Could, could it be that it is possible that we join the vast army of people today who do not believe that there's such a person as the devil? What I want to do over the next few minutes is I want to share with you and take a look at, at five points that we want to ponder. And we're going to stand at the end of this message and, and make a declaration. Hopefully you, you will hear that and you will be able to do that, but we, we want you to experience the, the, the awareness that there is a devil 
but you don't have to be frightened by him. You don't have to be intimidated by him. You don't have to, you don't have to listen to him. You can tell Satan to uh, flee from you. And, and we're going to cover all of those things. So here's the first question that we're going to uh, invest some time in. Is there such a person called the devil? And, and I'm going to let the Bible speak for itself. If you, uh, you'll see up here on the screen, uh, Ephesians uh, 6, verse 11 through 16, it says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. It's an incredible thing. Uh, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows from the evil one. That's what Satan's agenda is. He wants to destroy your life. He will do all kinds of things to, uh, to sucker you in and get you going. And, and one of the, his most effective uh, ways that he entraps people is he leads them to believe that he is not a real entity. It's just a fantasy that someone had. And so when you buy into that, your guard is down and you get indoctrinated into that kind of thing. See, the, the Bible names a real and parent foe, the devil. And his name is Lucifer. A.K.A. Satan, A.K.A. the devil, and a host of other A.K.A.s on how he is described and defined and, and how he, we can identify him. Uh, let's do a little lesson in Greek. The Greek word for devil is diaglosis, and it, it sh uh, shares a root with the verb diabolim. Which, which means to split. The devil is a splitter. He is a divider. He is a wedge driver. He delivered, he, he deceived Adam and Eve, Eve and got them away from Satan and they fell into sin as a consequence. So he wants to take un. He, he wants to take unbelievers to hell and make life hell for believers. You see that agenda? He wants to take unbelievers to hell. He wants to punish or make life or hell for believers. We're going to see how he does that and we're going to see what we can do against that. So, do such thoughts as that sound archaic, out of fashion? You know, the, that everybody goes through a season, and so they start out here, and they end up here, and they look different here, uh, and, and that's what Satan does. He keeps changing the picture. He, he keeps sucking us in and drawing us in and attracting us in, and we be, buy into it, and we pay a price. So, according to research from the Barna Company, here's some statistics. Four out of ten Christians, 40%, strongly agree that Satan is not a living being, but a symbol of evil. Store that in your mind. An additional two out of ten Christians, 19%, say they agree somewhat with that perspective. So that would say roughly 60% of the population 
believes that Satan is not a real entity, just what people talk about. A, a minority of Christians, 35%, indicate that they believe Satan is real. Satan is either false or he is real. And we're going working toward deciding which that is for each one of us. The remaining participants were not sure what they believed about the existence of Satan. They just didn't have a, a thought out process of who he is and what do I need to do uh, about him and that sort of thing. So the, the bottom line is most Christians refuse to believe to believe in the existence of Satan. Let me uh, take a roll call now. How many of you believe that there's such a thing as the devil? Let me see your hands. Okay. Uh, you, you've got, I have to tell you, uh, let, let me tell you the end of the story, the answer to the question, and you've, you've nailed it. Uh, it, it Jesus has uh, pestered him for generations and for centuries and will continue to do it until the time is right and then he will be cast into the lake of fire here's the interesting thing about the lake of fire and we'll touch on it again in just a moment the lake of fire the dude never gets out he's, he's burning without being uh still being a, losing you know his, oh, he doesn't have a right arm now because Satan and, and the fire and all that. He, he never has any relief. The, the current ridicule and skepticism with which he is viewed must uh, please him deeply. A again, because if people don't believe that he exists, they're not going to do anything to protect themselves against the attack of the devil. Sometimes we hear people talk, well, the devil made me do it. Uh, <laughs> and what a convenient out that is. Uh, <laughs> we, we have to know that, that every decision we make is the decision we make to do what we want to do, not what God wants us to do. And so as, as long as he isn't taken seriously, he is free to work his evil. The devil wants to make your life a mess and to keep his name out of it. He wants to create all kinds of chaos around you. He wants to uh, do all sorts of things that uh, will throw you off uh, where you don't realize that's, that's uh, the devil doing something to you or setting you up for failure or doing something like that. So the first question is, is there really such an entity as the devil? Here's question number two that we want to spend a moment with. What Satan does, we're going to identify that. The, the Bible traces Satan's activities to a moment of rebellion that occurred sometime between creation of the universe and the appearance of the snake in the garden. Those are very directly connected. And when God created the world, he saw that everything that he had made, and it was very good. In fact, in the beginning, Everything was good. Every drop of water, every tree, every animal, every angel, uh, everything that God created was good. Yet, some, sometimes between the events described in Genesis 1 and, and Genesis 3, an angel led a rebellion against God and was uh, chased from heaven. The prophet Ezekiel describe this downfall. Look at your uh, screen up here, Ezekiel uh, 28, verses 12 through 15. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. You were anointed as a guardian cherub for 
for I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your way from the day you were created until wickedness was found in you. So here we have the, the, the devil uh, made a decision. He looked at God and saw that God was worshiped. He was blessed. He, everybody loved him. And so he said, I want that. And so he lifted himself higher than God, did a few other things, and, and just kind of muddied the water, and God threw him out of heaven. We're going to see that in just a minute. So we have to ask the question, though, who was God talking to in those verses that we just read? And, of course, the answer to that is he was talking to the devil, and, and how sneaky he was and what he did and what God did as a result. See, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. What, what a right hand that would have been. Instead of being deceptive and, and, and uh, trying to take the whole universe for himself, he, he, he could have just been one of these guardian cherubs and, and had the time of his life knowing God and walking with God, touching people's lives, changing their lives, changing their circumstances and their, their situations. But the prophecy is a, destruction, a description of the fall of the devil. Let's look at the next two verses. Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God, and I expelled you, guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty, and you corrupted your, your, your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth. I made a spectacle of you before kings. This Lucifer was in a very enviable position next to God, perhaps even sitting with God, exchanging concepts and ideas, perhaps uh, coordinating with God when there was someone in trouble and God said, what if we did this? And, and Lucifer could have said, well, yeah, that is great, but if we did this, this would be, and maybe God said, yeah, go, go do that to him. And, and so some of that may have happened, but when, when Satan said, uh, I want to be worshipped, I don't want to do the worship, and I want to be worshipped, he changed the game, and God had to expel him. Luke says, you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You, you catch all of these adjectives that define who Lucifer was. He had to be a dynamite guy, but greed ruined his life, and it will ruin your life and mine. He says, you have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of the Sacred mountain, I will ascend above the tops of the cloud. I will make myself like the Most High. He wanted to be like the Most High and even beyond. Did you catch that where he said, I'll put go and over the clouds and all of those kinds of things. He wanted to be more notorious and more famous, more uh, gracious than, than anyone ever. Uh, let's follow that with Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8.13 from the Amplified, the reverent fear and worshipful awe of the Lord includes the hatred of evil. Pride, arrogance, the evil way, and perverted and twisted speech, I hate. That's, that's big with God. So again, clue in on this. Don't be driven by pride. Don't be driven by arrogance. Certainly don't be driven by the evil ways and perverted and twisted speech. 
We, we have an opportunity. We have an advantage over anyone else because we have God's word. Not only has it been spoken, but it's been printed and it touches our lives every day. If in fact, we will stand in the presence of the Lord day after day after day, allowing him to fill our lives and to bless us and to use us to make a difference in, in this world. Satan succumbed to pride. And as a result, he was cast out of heaven. Jesus referred to that eviction saying, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And even though he cast out of heaven, he's not cast out of us. See, he still has access, access to your life and mine. That's why you have to be on your guard. That's why you have to be a person who, who uh, knows the distinctive differences between what God is like and what Satan is like. There's no comparison, but we have to make the decision to be definitive for our own purposes. Let's take a look at 1 Peter 5. This is a great verse. This is one of the ones that I uh, would encourage you to memorize. Be self-controlled and alert. Be self-controlled and alert. I mean, what a warning that is. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around. Did you catch that? The enemy, your enemy, the devil. He's not a nice guy. He, he, he doesn't want to take you out to dinner. Well, he wants to take you out to dinner, but he wants to do it so he can get you upside down and drive you insane so that you will get thrown to heaven just like he will be. So he, he knows that, that rising above heaven is no longer in the mix, but in the mix is still the possibility that you could end up in hell because you allow pride and arrogance and those things, sin of all kinds, that you don't allow the Holy Spirit to touch and to repent, give you repentance for. So this is, this is huge. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like, like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. That's a, what, to know that Satan is out there doing that should have the effect of driving us closer to Jesus so that we have a greater uh, freedom in, in him. John 10.10, 10, he, he comes only to steal and kill and destroy. You have to understand that. He, he's not a nice guy. He acts nice, but he's not nice. So you have to make certain that you don't get drawn in. You have to make certain that you are uh, preparing your day and your life day after day so that you are walking according to God's standards and, and not uh, on the edge playing with, I can get away with this and I can get away with this. If we try to get away with enough of these sorts of things, we're going to find ourselves in the lake of hell and we'll never get out of that. That's why this is such a crucial uh, concept. He comes only to steal and kill and destroy. That's his agenda. He may say it any other way he wants to say it, but if you know that verse and you have it written on your heart, then you will not be ripped off and you'll not be attracted to the things of the devil. That's, that's su such an important concept. Here's what it looks like. If you are enjoying happiness, Satan wants to steal it. If you have discovered joy, he will try to kill it. Do you love your spouse? That's, that's a rich one with him. He, he gets in and works in between all the, the, the conflicts and such that families have. And so we have to have a strong family. 
We have to have a strong marriage relationship. We have to make decisions. Even though I may be disappointed with you now, that doesn't change how I feel about you. It doesn't change what I'm going to do because I am committed to you. So we have to make those kinds of decisions uh, in terms of our friendships, in terms of our marriages and everything like that. So he is the enemy of your God-given destiny and longs to be the destroyer of your soul. He knows your destiny is to be a whole person. Your destiny is to have an influence in your spouse and in your children and in people in the world and making a difference in their lives as you are in your own life. And that's what God blesses and that. It's what God uh, accomplishes in our lives. So don't dismiss him. Agree with the witnesses of Scripture. From the Bible's first and final pages, we are comforted with an arrogant, we're confronted, not comforted, I'm sorry. <laughs> with the arrogant and, and, and anti-God force of great cunning and power. He runs faster, jumps higher. You cannot keep up with him. Don't even try. Keep rejecting the devil. Confront the devil and he will flee from you. He is the devil, the serpent, the strong one, the lion, the wicked one, the accuser, the God of this age, the murderer, the prince of this world, the prince of the power of the air. Can you see that list of names and, and functions that he plays? He has his fingers in everything. And he is always looking for a way to, and to snare you and to trap you and to keep you from reaching your God-given destiny. He oversees a conglomeration of, of spiritual forces, per, uh, principalities, powers, dominion, thrones, princes, lords, gods, angels, unclean and wicked spirits. He's got his hand in every one of those places. He has the ability to give direction and rules and order to that group of people. And that's why we have to be more guarded than ever before. When we come to the awareness that there really is an entity called the devil, it's not any, anymore, it's not fun and games. You know, you, you, you go through a Halloween party, for example, and someone has a costume of, of a demonic kind of thing. That, that is, well, for one thing, I would never let my kids wear something like that. And I, I would uh, encourage you to make that same decision, not only for your kids, but for your grandkids. Because that is a subtle setup where you can take another step not a big one, but another step just so that you could be more understanding of Lucifer. He wants you to be deceived so that he can do whatever he wants to do. See, check this biography. Satan appeared in the garden at the beginning. He is cast into the fire in the end. He tempted David, bewildered Saul, waged an attack on Job. He is in the Gospels, the, bo the book of Acts, the writing of Paul, uh, Peter, John, James, and Jude. Serious students of, of Scripture must be serious about Satan. And one of the things that I, I was stunned by this week, as I was preparing this message, I, 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 th I thought there was like maybe two, maybe three verses that applied to the devil. The Bible's full of them because God knows 
how subtle he is and how deadly he is and how easily we fall for deception and think that that's the direction we're supposed to go. So Jesus, uh, he, he had a guard. He, 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 would not, he had lots of encounters with the devil, but he never caved in. And, and, and in fact, you, you'll see a, a reference on your note sheet, Matthew 4, verses 1 through 11. We're not going to look at it other than this view of it right here. I want to encourage you to uh, read those verses sometime today. This is the occasion after Jesus was baptized in water. The baptism in water uh, uh, allowed him to broadcast that the Son of Man has arrived. And, and the three-year journey of Jesus changing the culture of our world and our own cultures were wrapped up in those. Uh, there were three temptations that Satan gave him that would have been easy to just do them. But, but Jesus said, no way, not going to happen. You get out of here. And, and so he uh, continued to walk with, with God. So he pegged Satan as the one who snatches the good news from the hearts of the hearers. That's what he does. Changes the message. He does everything and anything to befuddle us, to confuse us, to cause us to make poor decisions. Which brings me to thought number three that we want to spend a moment with. I'm calling it Judge Satan because of who he is. Now prior to the crucifixion, Jesus proclaimed this, John uh, chapter 12, verse 31, Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out so that just before Jesus is going to the cross to die for your sins and mine, this is when this statement is, is, was made. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. Satan's uh, effect and his involvement is now nil. He, he has no authority, has no power, and we have to recognize that for ourselves. And part of the way we recognize it is to make sure we don't get involved in it. We, we don't even, uh, you know, horoscope. Someone says, oh, come on, you come on. If you, you want to walk in freedom and not get bound up, don't get involved in reading horoscopes. Those are satanic. Uh, going to, uh, I, I, I was in uh, Barcelona, Spain, and they, uh, at the time of year that we were there, there uh, it was a big festival uh, that uh, the Spanish have every year. Very demonic. Uh, all of the, kind of like uh, the New Orleans thing that they do down there. Uh, and, and the demonic, you, you walk past a table where, uh, whatever they call that kind of person, where he or she, witches, uh, but he or she is telling people's fortune. And, and you walk through and you're, you're, you're like this far away and you feel the evilness. And, and so I just kept going, kept my eyes forward, got through that. Because if we open ourselves up in the slightest way, we set ourselves up for incredible difficult experiences in life. And so we have to uh, constantly make those kinds of decisions. Let's look at Matthew 6, 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. This needs to be a prayer that we have so that we are constantly reminding ourselves and we're reminding Satan that we are, are not going to get involved in temptations and we're asking the Holy Spirit of God to deliver us from the evil one. That needs to be a, a part of your prayers that you want God to touch your life and to help you. Brings us to point number four 
And, and, and that is the devil is both a real devil and a defeated devil. The, the, the dude's out of juice. He doesn't have anything to offer you anymore. And, and if you will bear that in mind, you'll not get caught up. See, we, we play into the devil's hands when we pretend he does not exist. And we kind of joke around. So there was that uh, comedian about 45 or so years ago. One of his famous statements was, the devil made me do it. And if you hang around and you get involved in things like this, it, the devil will make you do it. And every time you do it, you get further and further and further away from God. And if you're sitting here today, if you're out in the parking lot, you're, you're watching this by streaming, and, and you're saying, oh my God, I'm doomed. No, you're never doomed until you hit the water of the lake of fire. So up to then, you can repent and you can ask God to bless you. You can ask Him to make you whole. You can ask Him to release His peace and His authority back into your life. Now here's something that's huge. The devil is the devil, but he's also defeated. He is also defeated. We're Satan ever to read the Bible, which he would never spend any time with it, he would be afraid of what it would say about him. If he ever were to read the Bible, he would be hugely disappointed. Because he reads the Bible, he discovers he loses. He discovers that all of his uh, pizzazz and, and, and everything he had going for him counts for nothing when a believer stands with God and says, I want to know who God is, not who Satan is. Colossians 2.15, And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing, triumphing over them by the cross. Do you understand how powerful the cross is? The cross is the crossroads of our redemption. Uh, the cross, if Jesus never went to the cross, we would still be in our sins. But because he completed the agenda, he, death on Calvary's cross has made it possible for you and I to be redeemed so that we can have hope and presence of the Almighty in our lives. And Jesus stripped Satan of all of those, those rights. And he stripped Satan uh, of a, a certain victory. And his minions often held on, they're all on a short leash. leash until God is ready for that moment. On that day, the great day, Jesus will cast Satan into the lake of fire and from which the devil will never return. Even so, Lord Jesus, cast him in the lake today. Do it now. 2 Peter 2, verse 4. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them into gloomy dungeons to be held for judgment. Nobody escapes without repentance. Nobody has a voice until they have repentance in their lives. And that's why we have to make the decision. I, I don't know about you. I remember when I first got saved. About every other day I was saying, Lord, would you just save me from my sins? I just wanted to make sure. And, and for several months or maybe a year or longer, every time I'd pray, and Lord, will you forgive me of my sins? Lord, I want to go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. And, and 
So I, I want to encourage you if you're at this flight bit uh, not certain that if, if you died today you would go to heaven, don't leave this building until you say, Lord, will you forgive me of my sins? I love you and I want to go to heaven. I don't want anything to do with Lucifer and hell. I, I would encourage you to do that. This, let's look at this uh, verse in Jude 6. Somewhere, maybe not. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority but abandoned their own homes, these he has kept in darkness bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. So it's just a reinforcement that there's going to be a judgment. And the, the way that you get past the judgment is the cross. That's the way you do it. Now evil will have its day and appear to have its way. But God with, will have his say and ultimately win the day. God's going to win. There's no question about it. Doesn't matter what's going on in our world. Doesn't matter if it's good things or bad things, chaos or peace. Jesus is the one that we measure when we reach heaven that we have been forgiven by that. Jesus has already defeated Satan. That doesn't have to happen again. But Satan, is in, he, he doesn't want to give up. And he won't give up. He is so bummed about how he lost that he wants to take as many of us as he possibly can to hell. So again, make sure you're not in that kind of position. Be alert to the devil, but don't get intimidated by him. Learn to recognize his stench. You smell, have you ever smelled, I'm sure you have, stuff that was decaying, a piece of meat, you know, whatever. It, it has that stench. And that's what Jesus is saying that Satan has. He has that stench to stay away from him. And when you see death and destruction, turn to God in prayer. That's so important. Many times we don't do that. How, how many of you try to solve your problems and then realize you can't, so you go to God? <laughs> I, I, I'm, the, I, I'm the president of that club. I recognize you. You guys were at the meeting the other day. <laughs> we, we, we need to be intimate with God so that we can be in heaven with Him. Since his name means divided, whatever you see, whenever you see divorce, rejection, and isolation, you know the culprit. So go immediately to Scripture. You see, how do you combat the things that go wrong? You do it through prayer. Let me say that again. How do you combat the works of the devil when things are falling apart? It's through prayer. Prayer is the most powerful tool that you'll have to work with. Make sure you utilize it. Here's a number five. Stand on the promise of God regarding Satan. Romans 16, verse 20. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. So this is an up and coming day. This is a time that is a real time in real time. It'll happen. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. He's going he's to crush him for our sakes. And th- he did that basically at the cross. And so that's why you and I have authority and we can uh, work within the framework of that. I'm going to show you in rapid order about five more verses. Uh, 1 John 4.4 4, you're, You dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. The one that is in you is Jesus Christ. The one that's in the world is the devil. Here's the next one. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. God will be there for you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Know that you have that authority. Don't let the devil play with your mind. Don't let him play with your ambitions. Don't let him uh, uh, fall prey to your family, any of those things. Here's a great one. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. For woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. If anybody knows that, Satan knows it and it's, it, it's evident. Ephesians 6, 13, put on God's full armor with the belt of truth tied around your waist and the protection of right living on your chest, on your feet. Wear the good news of peace to help you stand strong and also use the shield of faith with which you can, you can stop all the burning arrows of the evil one. It, it, it's just a, a, a release of the power of God. God has power and He has authority and He can do each and every one uh, of these. Now soldiers know that it would be suicide for them to walk into a battle scene with shorts on and and flip-flops. They they know that they're they're going to be doomed. And so what a soldier does when he goes to battle, he takes every weapon he has. He, He wants to make sure He's not going to run out of ammo. He he wants to make sure that he has the right uh, weapons so that he can uh, displace the the enemy and 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 win the win the fight. So so we must do the same thing. Every conflict is a contest with Satan and his forces. We do battle with him, mano a mano, hand to hand. We, we, we need to be prepared for that kind of encounter. Uh, if you've ever seen anyone who's demon-possessed, you'll know exactly why that's important. Uh, we've got stories to tell of what we've seen over the years. And, and for that reason, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. I want you to see this statement here. What are these weapons? In in talks recently, talking with people, talking about uh, what potentially could happen uh, in America with all these riots and all of those things going on. It it, it could be a, a lot of devastation and I said to uh, the guy talking, I said, well, when do we get to shoot people? <laughs> he said, you don't. And when I heard that, I realized your weapons of warfare, prayer, worship, scripture. Scripture. That's your gun, that's your knife, that's your bazooka, that's your tank. That's everything you got. And let me give it to you again. You have to recognize this because this will change your life. Prayer, worship, and scripture. 
If you want to live in freedom, you got to get good at that. So when we pray, we engage the power of God against the devil. When we worship, we do what Satan himself did not do. We place God on the throne. When we pick up the sword of Scripture, we do what Jesus did in the wilderness. He responded to Satan by proclaiming truth. And since Satan has a severe allergy to truth, he left Jesus alone. Here's a truism. Satan will not linger long where God is praised and prayers are, are spoken. If you want to get rid of the devil, say, Hallelujah, Lord, you are the great I am, and I worship you, and I come before you, and I bow before you, Lord. I desire the anointing of the Holy Spirit to come on my life in such a profound way that I'll never be the same again, Lord, and that people and, and forces that try to overpower me, Lord, they would be stepped on, and they would be smashed, and they would have no way to come. You get the idea? Yes. Pray a prayer that will move God. And, and turn your heart totally to him. Satan may be vicious, but he'll never be victorious. That spot belongs to Jesus Christ. Okay, here's the final exam. Is there really such a, an identity, a person, called the devil. Yes. Everyone who says yes, let me see your hand. All across this auditorium, out there in the parking lot, people we don't even know walking by suddenly raise their hands because the anointing of the Lord is so overwhelming that they can't keep their hands in their pockets. See, that's why we need to pray and we need to allow God to do great things in our lives. Let's stand together, let's pray together. Father, we worship you and we thank you that you are the Lord God Almighty. And Lord, even though we have a, uh, an enemy who is out, he, he outweighs us, he outruns uh, us, he, he can do everything better than we can do. He has power and authority that we have, but we have some power and authority also, God given by you, Lord Jesus, and you have given us the ability to cast demons out of people. We, we've, you've given us the, the ability, Lord, to change people's lives by moving them out of relationships that are, are subject to giving them a lot of lifelong kind of pain in their life. So, Lord, we declare today that we want to walk with you. We want to be free in you. And we want to know and we want to use your arsenal, our, our ability, Lord, to pray and to worship and to read your scripture.